and welcome back to Love English. I'm Layla. And I'm Sabra. And today we're going to help you to sprint your way, which means to run very, very fast, to your English speaking goals. And we're going to be looking at a hundred advanced English adjectives for people, places, and things. From conceited to cosmopolitan. Dutiful to dreadful, these adjectives are going to significantly boost your vocabulary range. Now we know that 100 advanced English adjectives is a lot to learn, but we are challenging you to do it. And what's more, we want you to challenge yourself. We think in just three months you can be a confident English speaker. But if only there was a way to get the motivation you need, to get lots of speaking practice, to learn with a native English teacher, a professional teacher, what could be the way? Hmm. Well, actually there is. Our partner, Lingoda, an online language school, are offering you an incredible opportunity to boost your English speaking skills fast. Building your confidence when speaking English is really achievable when learning with Lingoda. In fact, you can also learn French, German and Spanish and even business English. Just ask Sabra. She's been learning Spanish with Lingoda and now I can't shut her up. Sí, estoy aprendiendo español con Lingoda. Entonces, uh, por es primer, primero inicial razón, mm -hmm. ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Y para es el finalidad. Última, razón última. Último razón, ok. Leila, te recomiendo Lingoda. Tienes que aprender un otro idioma también. ¿Qué? No entiendo. So, do you sometimes feel scared to speak in English? Are you afraid that the words are not going to come out right, even if you have them in your head? Do you want to improve your English speaking skills and confidence fast? Do you want to overcome your fear of speaking English? Boost your fluency in just three months and earn up to 100% refund on your tuition fees. What's an advanced word for refund, Sabra? Hmm, an advanced word for refund. Well, that would be reimbursed. So keep watching if you want to know how you can get 100% of your fees reimbursed, so paid back to you. Right guys, it's time to sprint to your English speaking goals. So the sprint starts on January the 7th, 2020 and lasts until the 5th of April, 2020. What a great way to start reaching your goals in the new year. You have to participate in an agreed number of classes each month and you can only take one class every day per day. So the super sprint is 30 classes a month for three months and you will get 100% refund if you are able to attend all your classes. The sprint is 15 classes every month for three months and you can get 50% refund if you attend all those classes. As we said, with both the super sprint and sprint, you can learn English, Spanish, French, German, business English. So how can you join the sprint and super sprint? It's simple. So you need to sign up for the Sprint by the 19th of December 2019, so that's only one month away. And when you sign up, you do need to pay a €49 Euro deposit, which is like your booking fee. However, this gets refunded back to you or taken off your first payment. So it does get uh, taken off that first payment. But we have a special offer for our Love English viewers that Lingoda have given us. And that is that you get 10 euros off your 49 euro deposit if you sign up using our code SPRINT63. So you'll just pay 39 euros instead of 49 if you put in SPRINT63. Now places on the Sprint are limited and that is why we recommend signing up sooner rather than later. Make sure that you check the Sprint rules to ensure that you qualify for that 100% or 50% refund. When you sign up to the Sprint and Super Sprint, you agree to make three payments, one each month for your tuition fees. So guys, you can click the link below to learn more about the Sprint and also to learn more about the 20,000 and more students who have been helped by Lingoda to achieve their English speaking goals. So do go and check that out. Right, so let's test your stamina and see how many words you can learn and how fast. 
Now we do have a little challenge for a brave love English student, or maybe a few brave love English students. But what we would like you to do is, if any of you want to try this, we would like you to try and write sentences below with all a hundred adjectives. If anybody can do this, then we are going to give you a shout out in our next Love English Talks video. We will personally say well done to you. So let's see if any of you can make that challenge. Right, let's get started. Advanced adjectives to describe people. Number one, affectionate. Affectionate. To show feelings of liking or loving someone by being tactile, showing physical affection, touching, kissing, hugging. Italians are very affectionate. They always greet you with a kiss on the cheek. Number two, boisterous, boisterous. Being noisy and not controlled. The kids are so boisterous, they are always play fighting. Number three, conceited, conceited. Meaning to be too proud of yourself, too proud of your abilities and your skills. Rather negative. Without wishing to be too conceited, I'm the best teacher on YouTube. Number four, competent, competent. To be able to do something well. She's a very competent lawyer. You can trust her to get the job done. Number five, clumsy, clumsy. A clumsy person often has accidents or breaks things because they do not pay attention. They're not careful when they are doing something. You broke another glass, you are so clumsy. Number six, condescending, condescending. Treating someone as if you are more intelligent or important than them. She was so condescending, telling me how to do my job. Number seven, courageous, courageous. Coming from courage, meaning to be brave without fear. It was very courageous of her to move to a new country. Number eight, Conscientious, conscientious. Putting a lot of effort into your work, really working hard. She's a very conscientious student. Her homework is always done well. Number nine, cynical, cynical. Believing that people are only interested in themselves and not sincere, honest, truthful. I'm rather cynical. I don't think he's trying to help me at all. Number 10, cranky. To be easily annoyed or upset. To become angry easily. I'm always cranky in the morning before my coffee. Number 11 is cantankerous. Cantankerous. And this is really an extreme form of grumpy. So if you are cantankerous, you are very grumpy and you are irritable with other people. You can sometimes be a bit rude to them. Sometimes older people can be described as being cantankerous. They can be a little bit grumpy. For example, my grandma, when she's ill, she is quite cantankerous. Number 12 is callous, callous. And callous means cruel, not showing uh, kindness or empathy towards others. We can describe behavior as callous. We can say, that was not kind behavior. You didn't show any understanding of the feelings of others. In fact, that was quite callous. Number 13 is crafty, crafty. And this means clever, but in a dishonest way. In a way where you're trying to manipulate the situation for your own benefit. So somebody who is plotting and trying to think how they can get the best out of the situation for them. So crafty people often find ways to avoid paying their taxes, for example. Number 14 is conniving. And this is quite similar to crafty. So the word is conniving. Quite similar to crafty, but it is even worse, perhaps. It's even more negative. It suggests serious plotting, scheming, quite deceitful, you know, very manipulative. So if you say somebody is conniving, it is definitely a negative adjective. It's not a nice thing to say about somebody. Often we might think in the past when uh, we had more medieval kings and queens, and you had to be quite crafty to stay alive in the king's court sometimes, there might have been some kind of advisors who were conniving, they were scheming and plotting for their own benefit. 15 is decisive, decisive. And this is when you can make decisions very quickly, very easily. You are not a person who 
ums and ahs and worries about the decision. You don't have a problem making it quickly. You know what you want. Number 16 is devoted, devoted. And this means you are absolutely committed to that particular thing or that particular person. It suggests that you have a lot of care and a lot of love invested in that thing or that person and you would not leave them or leave it very easily at all. In fact, it would be very hard for you to leave them or it. Number 17 is diligent, diligent. And this means very hard working, very careful, really wanting to do your best at something. If we say somebody is very diligent, it's really that they're hard working and they try very hard and they want to get things right. So an example sentence could be, she is so diligent, she stays up studying every night until 11 to prepare for her exams. Number 18 is dowdy, dowdy. And this means unfashionable, not dressing in a way which suits you, a little bit unattractive. So an example sentence could be, she's quite dowdy, she really needs a makeover. Number 19 is dutiful, dutiful, not beautiful, dutiful. And this is a person who always does their duty, who always knows what their duty is, what their responsibilities are, and they follow that. So often we can talk about our children being dutiful, like he's a very dutiful son, he always does what's right for the family and respects the family, things like this. Number 20, demonstrative, demonstrative. And this is where you like to demonstrate how you feel. So through actions, you like to show how you feel. So often we can talk about our romantic partners as being demonstrative or not. Personally, I like demonstrative. My boyfriend knows that. Must remind him to buy me some flowers. 21. Earnest. Earnest. Serious and determined. In fact, too serious perhaps, and unable to find your actions funny, a little bit too serious. He was a very earnest young man, 22, evasive, evasive, answering questions in a way that is not direct or clear, especially because you don't want to give an honest answer. Well, politicians are very evasive. You can never get them to give a straight answer. 23, egotistical, egotistical, a tendency to always think about yourself, to put yourself first above others, essentially being a bit selfish, to think that you are more important than other people. Whoa, he is so egotistical, he really thinks all the girls love him. 24, fastidious, fastidious, to pay too much attention to small details and wanting everything to be correct and perfect. She is so fastidious when it comes to cleaning the house. Too much. 25, fervent, fervent. This is a positive adjective to describe a person who has strong beliefs or feelings. They're very sincere and true about their beliefs. He's a fervent supporter of Brexit. 26, fussy, fussy. Not easily satisfied, having very high standards for things. She's always fussy about how she dresses. She's always fussy about how she dresses. 27, gluttonous, gluttonous. To eat or drink much more than you need. Everyone is so gluttonous at Christmas time. 28, a little bit like cranky, grouchy, grouchy. To be easily annoyed or complain a lot. Oh, don't be so grouchy just because it's raining. 29, gregarious, gregarious. To enjoy being sociable, to like being around people. Sabra is so gregarious, she loves parties. Number 30, hypocritical, hypocritical. A negative adjective to describe somebody. Pretending to be what you are not or to believe something that actually you don't truly believe. The politicians complained about him lying. How hypocritical. Number 31 is incompetent, incompetent. And this is really not a pleasant thing to say to someone. If you say, oh, you're incompetent, it means you can't do your job properly. You're not, you're not competent, meaning able 
to do your job very well. So not to be confident, incompetent. Number 32 is impetuous, impetuous. And this is very similar to impulsive. This is where you make decisions very quickly without really thinking about the consequences. You, you live in the moment and you do what you think you, what is best for you in the moment, but it's not necessarily always the best thing. The next one is a nice positive adjective. It is jovial, to be jovial. And this means to be in a good mood. If we feel jovial, we feel happy, we feel joyful. So yes, it means you feel upbeat, you woke up in a good mood, or you had good news, and so you feel jovial. Perhaps it's sometimes a better word than to use happy all the time. Number 34 is juvenile, juvenile. And this can refer to somebody who is young, a juvenile, so somebody who is not an adult yet, still a teenager. But we can also describe somebody as being juvenile when they are an adult, if they are acting like they are much younger. Basically, it is a synonym of immature. Number 35, I love this word. This is loquacious, loquacious. It's actually a beautiful sounding word as well, loquacious. And this means very talkative. And to be honest, guys, this probably describes me. I am quite loquacious, I'm very chatty and talkative. And sometimes Layla gets a little bit fed up with me. <laughs> Number 36, melancholic melancholic and this means very sad or depressed in a in a low mood feeling blue number 37 is naive naive and if you are naive you are the kind of person who hasn't had a lot of experience of life and maybe you don't see the negative side of life a lot yet you are quite innocent so perhaps you always believe people are telling the truth you want to see the best in people Actually, it's a very nice way to be, but unfortunately, it's not always useful because you can get disappointed because you find out life is not as perfect as you think. Number 38 is petulant, petulant. And this means that you want your own way. Again, it's quite childish. It's quite that you are a demanding person. If you're petulant, you want things your way, you complain a lot this kind of thing. So again, acting like a much younger person than your years. Number 39 is tenacious, tenacious. And this means very determined, holding on to things. You don't easily let things go. You are very tenacious about getting what you want, determined, not easily giving up. So I would say uh, the animal, the squirrel, is very tenacious. I don't know if you've seen Ice Age, but certainly the squirrel in Ice Age, he will not give up on trying to get that nut. <laughs> so he is very tenacious. <laughs> Number 40 is zealous, zealous. Now a person who is zealous believes very strongly and very passionately in what they believe in. So often we say that people are zealous about their politics or about their religion. Right, places. Now these adjectives can be used to describe places, but sometimes they can also be used to describe things. 41. Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan. Referring to a place containing many different cultures, things, cuisines from many different parts of the world. London is a very cosmopolitan city. You can get all kinds of food from around the world. And there are many different nationalities living there. 42. Lively. Lively. Meaning full of life and energy. It was such a lively party. The music was fantastic. Everyone was dancing. 43. Bustling. Bustling. Meaning a place full of activity, things going on. Very, very busy. The town is always bustling in the summer. 44. Hectic hectic, quite similar to bustling, but maybe a little bit more chaotic, confused, often referring to a lot of very quick, rapid movement. So you could probably describe London as being a little bit hectic, especially at Christmas time, totally hectic. 45, dreadful, dreadful, 
a negative adjective meaning very bad, causing suffering, unhappiness, maybe even fear. The hotel was dreadful. The rooms were so dirty. 46. Tatty. Tatty. Another negative adjective meaning to be in a poor condition, worn or shabby, basically old. The town needed some updating. It was rather tatty. 47. Worn. Worn. Very similar to tatty, but more to be damaged as a result of long-term use, overuse. The playground was rather worn. The children really needed somewhere a bit more modern to play. Or you could use it to describe things. His trainers were so worn after playing football for so long. 48. Dated. Dated. Meaning out of date. Old. Old fashioned. The house was so dated it really needed a good refurbishment. 49. Shabby. Shabby. Similar to tatty. Meaning in bad condition, in poor condition because of overuse or long term use. The house was rather shabby. I don't think it had been decorated in years. Again, another word that is often used for things. Number 50 is quaint. Quaint. And quaint means very cute, pretty, picturesque, sometimes a little bit old fashioned. So we can describe uh, little cottages as quaint. Or a cup of tea in a very traditional English tea room can also be described as quaint. Number 51 is state of the art, state of the art. And this means very modern, very at the edge of technological developments. So often we describe um, computer rooms as state of the art or scientific facilities as state of the art. For example, we could say, our scientists work in state of the art facilities. Number 52 is medieval medieval and this means that the object or the castle or the costume came or appears to look like it came from the middle ages so a medieval costume for example or a medieval castle number 53 is touristy touristy and this is actually a word which we use more and more these days and basically it means that the place is visited by a lot of tourists and this can mean that it might have brought down the level of authenticity that the place had originally. Maybe there is a lot of, for example, cafes, bars, taking away from the natural environment, huge amounts of tourists. So you can say, hmm, that place is a little touristy. Number 54 is dodgy, dodgy. And dodgy is a fantastic word. It's actually British slang. And basically it means that something doesn't seem reliable, doesn't seem a good idea or good quality. You can't trust it. So if we talk about a dodgy area, we mean the area is maybe not that safe. It's maybe not somewhere where we should visit on our own, things like that. Perhaps there is high levels of crime, something like this. Number 55 is classy, classy. And classy means elegant, sophisticated. So if we talk about a classy lady, we could say Layla is a classy lady. She dresses well, she speaks nicely, she behaves herself most of the time, as long as she hasn't been given a gin and tonic. <laughs> so generally, she's quite classy, a classy lady. But also a restaurant can be classy, meaning sophisticated and elegant. A place can be classy, so shops can be classy, clothing can be classy. Generally, it's associated with sophistication and elegance. Number 56 is affluent. Affluent. And affluent means a place which is wealthy. You can also talk about a person being affluent, but we do often use it to describe places. So you might say, oh, this area is affluent, meaning it's well off, it's a wealthy area. Number 57 is ghastly. Oh, ghastly. Careful, that H there is silent. So ghastly means horrible or frightening or scary. It's very negative. So if you say, oh, it was a ghastly experience, it means it was really a horrible experience. Number 58 is divine, divine. 
and divine means wonderful, perfect. Actually, originally it relates to, to God, to heaven, divinity, the divine, uh, which suggests perfection. So when we say something is divine, we mean it's perfect, wonderful. So if I say, your cooking is divine, or this dessert is divine, it means, oof, absolutely delicious. Number 59, again, this is a very positive adjective. This is exquisite, exquisite. And it means perfect, absolutely beautiful. So if we say, this wedding dress is exquisite, we mean it's so beautiful, it's really got a high level of perfection. Number 60 is hip. To be hip or a place is hip. This is very similar to trendy. It means showing the latest trends and fashions, often where younger people are going. So you might say, oh, there's a hip new bar in town or a very hip area. 61, trendy, trendy meaning very fashionable, up to date, modern. Soho is a very trendy area in London. It's great to go there and have drinks. 62, funky, funky. Now funky is actually referring to a type of music. So funk is a style of music, but now we use it as a more informal way to say fashionable, cool, hip. It is such a funky bar, you will love it. 63, homely, homely, meaning plain and ordinary, but pleasant, comfortable. The hotel was very homely. I really felt comfortable there. 64, a little bit more of an expression than an adjective. To be in need of some TLC or a little bit of TLC. Now this can refer to a place or a person. Tender, loving care, TLC. So it just means that it's in need of some attention, some kindness. It's a beautiful building, it just needs a little bit of TLC. 65, grubby, grubby, meaning dirty or in need of a good clean. The kitchen was really grubby, it really needed a good clean. Vast, vast, meaning very big, huge, but referring to a place. The landscape was vast. 67, similarly, expansive, expansive. Again, covering a wide area, being a very big, large area. The shopping mall was expansive. It was massive, it was huge. 68, idyllic or idyllic. Idyllic, American English, idyllic, British English. So, idyllic, meaning extremely happy or peaceful, picturesque, a beautiful place referring to being ideal, idyllic. It was a beautiful hotel in an idyllic setting. 69, picturesque, picturesque. Now you can guess from the word, meaning that you could take a lovely picture there, but scenic, beautiful, particularly in maybe an old fashioned way sometimes. The streets of Rome are picturesque. 70, vibrant, vibrant, meaning full of life, lots of energy. It was a vibrant island full of animals and wildlife. Number 71 is cumbersome. Cumbersome. Not easy to pronounce that word, cumbersome. And this means difficult to move, quite big and unwieldy, difficult to move it around. So often quite heavy as well. So if we say, oh, this dress I'm wearing, it's cumbersome. You know, if I feel it's very heavy and it's difficult to walk in it. So this brings us nicely to the next one, which is bulky. And bulky means, again, large, too big really, and taking up too much room. Number 73 is ragged, ragged. And this is often used in the short form, actually, the noun, which is rags. For example, poor Cinderella, when she wasn't allowed to go to the ball and she had that horrible stepmother, she had to wear rags, which were old, torn clothes. So the adjective is in fact ragged. Number 74 is a beautiful word. It is iridescent, iridescent. And this means that when the light hits something that many colors are revealed. So the light or the direction can make the colors appear differently. So some jewelry can be iridescent in the light. Next word, another great one, especially probably for girls who prefer this more than guys. 
it is sparkly. And sparkly means that when the light hits something, many colours come off this. For example, a sparkly dress or a diamond ring. Ooh. Also, we can say that somebody has sparkly eyes. Number 76 is compact, compact. And this means very kind of tightly packed, very tidily packed in a small area. So if we say the flat is very compact, we mean everything is tightly packed away, everything is very kind of tidy and organized. So although it's small, it's very efficient. Number 77 is luminous, luminous. And this means giving or shedding a lot of light. So we might describe the stars as luminous. Or if somebody is very happy, we might say they appear to be luminous. There seems to be a lot of light, a lot of happiness radiating from their face. Number 78 is vast, vast. So if you say a place or a space is very vast, it means there's a huge amount of space going on and on. It seems a, a huge area. So we might say, for example, in Mongolia, the plains of Mongolia, they seem to go on forever. They are very vast. Number 79 is smooth. And this means a very even surface. So very soft and even and pleasant to the touch. So for example, babies have lovely smooth skin. Number 80 is jagged, and this is very different to smooth. So this is where the surface is not even. In fact, it has lots of different points protruding. So for example, if you break a bottle, the bottle will be very jagged where there's different pieces of glass. 81, ornate, ornate meaning made of intricate shapes or decorated with complex patterns. The building had many ornate features. 82, brittle, brittle, meaning fragile, easily broken, can be broken. The leaves on the trees in autumn as they're falling are very brittle. 83, elaborate, elaborate. Being complicated in design, having a lot of detail and features. Now, this could refer to things, situations, plans. The Queen has elaborate security precautions to make sure she's safe. 84. Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Present or appearing everywhere. Very common. Mobile phones are ubiquitous around the world. 85. Metallic. Metallic. To be metal-like in sound or look or even taste. Metallic. Her metallic eyeshadow looked really funky. 86. Synthetic. Synthetic. Man-made. Made from artificial substance, often trying to seem like they are natural in appearance. Copying a natural product. Many cheaper clothes are made from synthetic materials. 87. Luxurious. Luxurious. J Jurious. Luxurious. Extremely comfortable, elegant, often very expensive. But a luxurious item is enjoyable, partly because of the expense. Their house is very luxurious. Coming, of course, from luxury. 88. Retro. Retro. Similar to styles and fashions from the recent past, so often referring to the 1950s, 60s, 70s, maybe even 80s. VW vans are so retro. I love them. They're really cool. Some words to refer to food, actually. Crunchy. Crunchy. Not always referring to food, but when something is crunchy, it often makes a sound like this. So it's hard with a, a specific sound, a texture. Crisps are very crunchy. 90, tender, tender. Easy to cut or chew, soft in texture. It was a fantastic steak. It was lovely and tender. 91, hearty, hearty. Referring to food, meaning wholesome or substantial. So it was a very hearty meal of potatoes and vegetables. Right guys, we're on the final eight. So we're nearly there, we're nearly at the end. So number 92 is creamy, creamy. And this just means that the product contains a lot of cream. 
So we might say a creamy dressing or a creamy dessert. Number 93, this is a great word. It is indulgent, indulgent. And this means that it is a treat. Something is very indulgent. It's something you can't do very often because it's, it's a treat. So if I book myself for the day to go and have a lovely spa in a posh hotel, this would be quite indulgent. We can also refer to food as indulgent. We might say an indulgent chocolatey dessert. Number 94 is chewy, chewy. And this just means that you have to chew the thing a lot. It's not easy to swallow it. So you have to chew it a lot first before you swallow it. Number 95 is bountiful, bountiful. And this means there has been a lot produced. There is, is an abundance of this thing. So in large quantities. So if we say the food at the feast was bountiful, it means there was so much food and such a variety, there was really an abundance of it. Number 96 is zesty, zesty. And this can mean a little bit acidic with a little bit of perhaps spice or something like this. Certainly if we're talking about a person being zesty, it means they have a lot of energy and they're very active. So she seemed to be in a zesty mood. It means she was very energetic. Number 97 is rubbery. And this just means that the texture of something or the feel of something is like rubber. So rubber is of course the thing that our tires are made from. So if we say, oh, this spaghetti, I think it's overcooked. It really feels quite rubbery. Number 98 is moist, moist. And this means a little wet, containing moisture. And this is why we call moisturizer, moisturizer. Number 99 is stale. And this is particularly used to describe bread. And this is basically when the bread has gone hard and it's not good anymore, it's not fresh anymore. And number 100, woo, we got there, is flaky, flaky. And this means that something uh, produces smaller pieces, easily falls apart and uh, comes into smaller pieces. So for example, some pastries can be very flaky. If you eat a pastry, often a lot of the pastry will, will fall away because it can be quite flaky. Right guys, we have come to the end of our 100 advanced adjectives. I hope you got to the end with us and you made it through this challenge. The students who managed to comment below and use 100 of these adjectives in some example sentences will get a shout out in the next Love English Talks video that we film. Thank you so Thanks much for watching. watching. Bye bye. bye.